Hey everyone, I'm Jensen. It is Tuesday, September 22nd, and from new Halloween guidelines to sending a woman to the moon, crossing my fingers on that one, I have all the stories you need to know to get in the loop this afternoon. But first, let's break down the latest coronavirus data from the state. Now, as always, these numbers may still be low due to a lag in reporting from over the weekend, and we should get a more clear picture tomorrow and Thursday, but keeping that in mind, here are today's trends. There were 685 new cases of coronavirus compared to the 21-day average of 1,011. 12 new coronavirus-related deaths were reported compared to 22, 70 new hospitalizations compared to the average of 68, and there were 11 new ICU admissions, which is the same as that 21-day average. And as a reminder, those numbers include both confirmed and probable. But let's focus in on confirmed cases for just a minute. The state reported just 579 in the last 24 hours, and that's the lowest number in a month and second lowest total in three months. Plus, the big story, I think, is the fact that Ohio's positivity rate dropped to 2.9 percent. Good numbers out of Ohio. So you go, Ohio. Now let's look at the list of counties with the most cases per 100,000 people. Putnam County dropped out of the top spot for the first time in weeks, coming in second just after Mercer County. Putnam was reported to have 236 cases per 100,000, which is unfortunately still well above that CDC threshold of 100. But Henry County dropped way down the list, out of the top 10 even. Last week, the county came in seventh, but today they held the 18th spot with 114 cases per 100,000. So both counties moving in the right direction. But Wood County, while still not in the top 10, has continued to creep up the list. Today, they took the 11th spot, so that is definitely something we are going to keep an eye on. And the CDC, for the first time, has released guidance on how to safely celebrate some of these holidays coming up in the fall, like Halloween, Dia de los Muertos, Thanksgiving, and Black Friday. So we have guidance for all of those holidays on our website, WTOL.com. But for now, let's just focus on Halloween. Door-to-door -door trick or treating, attending crowded costume parties or haunted houses, going on hay rides and traveling to festivals not in your community are just a few of the higher risk activities that the CDC said we should all avoid this year. The lower risk activities from the CDC include carving pumpkins with members of your household or while practicing social distancing with neighbors and friends, decorating your house, creating a scavenger hunt, or maybe hosting a virtual Halloween costume contest or having a movie night with the people you live with. For a more traditional Halloween experience, the CDC has recommended several modifications to your basic trick-or-treating, which they view as a moderate risk activity. So you can organize one-way trick-or-treating where individually wrapped goodie bags are lined up for families to grab and go while continuing to social distance. So that could be at the end of a driveway or at the edge of a yard. The one-way model is also suggested for haunted forests where mask use should be enforced and distance is advised. When planning any activity, the CDC says to think about how the virus is in your community, how long the event is, how many people will be there, where people are traveling from, and the behaviors of the people who are in attendance. So the state has already released guidance for Halloween and Lucas County will be releasing their own soon. So yeah, a lot of advice coming in to help you make the best decisions this, this season. And Cedar Point is once again requiring guests to reserve their spots before heading out to the park. Reservations will be required starting October 3rd and through the end of the season. And as a reminder, Cedar Point's new Tricks and Treats Fall Festival recently kicked off in place of Halloween weekends, which the park was forced to cancel this year. The COVID-19 pandemic has also forced the park to operate on a reduced schedule this season. Face coverings and health screenings are still required for guests to enter the park. And we have a link to make a reservation to visit Cedar Point on our website right now. And now let's take a look at an upsetting story from our area. A Toledo woman was arrested and charged on Sunday due to an incident at the site of Braylon Nobles Memorial at Hunters Ridge Apartments. 59-year-old Elaine Bowersox was arrested on September 20th and charged with disorderly conduct and menacing and knowingly causing another to believe they may be in danger of serious physical harm. Another woman reported to Toledo police that she feared for her safety as she allegedly watched Bowersox carry a bat and cause damage at the site of Braylon Nobles Memorial. The body of three-year-old Braylon was found in the nearby pool at the apartment complex after he was reported missing earlier this month. People did stop by the memorial yesterday to leave more items in honor of Braylon. Bowersox is being held at the Lucas County Correction Center now. 
And the Toledo Police Department says they've been receiving a number of complaints about a scam going around that involves speeding violations. Police warn residents that if you receive an email stating that you owe money to the city for a speed violation and it comes from an email address that ends in at citygovernment.co.gov, that is false. It's fake. Don't send money. Don't reply to that email. TPD says real City of Toledo emails end in at toledo.oh.gov. So keep that in mind. Now let's talk for a minute about the election. Because of the large number of absentee ballot request forms that are already received by the state, Secretary of State Frank LaRose is emphasizing that unlike in years past, the projected results may not be known the night of November 3rd. Mail-in ballots must be postmarked by November 2nd or earlier to count, but ballots are allowed to be counted for up to 10 days after Election Day. So as long as they are in fact postmarked by that day or earlier, they can be counted after November 3rd. Results are then officially certified and reported November 24th. So LaRoe said he'll be upgrading his website so the potentially large number of outstanding absentee ballots will be clearly visible on election night. He said reporting the number of outstanding ballots is designed to make it abundantly clear if one candidate has in fact defeated another or if more counting is needed to determine the victor. Usually the margin in races is it's not so close that the smaller number of absentee ballots arriving after election day would make any difference. However, with up to 50% of Ohioans projected to vote by mail, late arriving votes could make a big difference. Elections officials say Ohioans who plan to vote by mail should ask for their ballots earlier and fill them out and return them ASAP. And today is voter registration day, so here's your daily reminder to register to vote. And if you are already registered, it doesn't hurt to double check to make sure that you're still on the list and that all of your information is current. So, do that. The deadline to register is October 5th, so you have a little bit of time, but don't delay. Don't let yourself forget. And now let's leave off on some fun news, as always, as a reward for, you know, making it to the end here. NASA has shared its $28 billion plan for the Artemis program, which is designed to return astronauts to the moon by 2024. The Artemis plan, if successful, would put the first woman and the next man on the moon by 2024. The mission would mark the first time since 1972 that humans have touched down on the lunar surface. So we we will keep you updated on that progress. But that is all I have for you today. If you liked this, show it by hitting the like button and subscribe to our channel. I'm Jensen, and now you are in the loop.